I'm willing to believe that for most of your life, every document you've ever made or that most people around you ever made have been made with either Microsoft Word that you've obviously paid for and not pirated from 1337X, Google Docs, or in much rarer cases, even LibreOffice Writer. I cannot blame you. They do their job, but I don't think they're fit for someone like me. But I am a sucker for open source software. I mean, just look at me. I'm a Linux user. And while LibreOffice Writer should do the trick in this case, it didn't scratch my itch. Ever since I discovered the power of LaTeX, I was fully enthralled. But I was left with a spot that I just couldn't solve no matter how hard it seemed that I tried. That being the production of ebooks. The issue is that LaTeX is a language that is meant to produce perfectly formatted PDFs. And, well, PDF and EPUB are two very, very different formats. PDF was made to solve a rather specific problem. That problem being printable documents. You can notice that that's the case from how hard it is to edit PDFs. You can fix a typo in the PDF, but then the whole formatting can and probably will break, leaving you with a rather ugly PDF. The whole thing is fixed in place and simply isn't meant to be edited. It's meant to be a compilation target towards which programs will turn a document that's easily editable into a final PDF. In contrast, EPUB is just a zip file with some XHTML, CSS, and whatever media there is inside of it. And maybe even some JavaScript. It was made for digital devices. By default, the contents adapt to the size of the screen, or to whatever size your ebook reader is. You can swap out fonts and change font sizes for anything you want, with no complaint from the format or the readers. This is amazing as, for example, if you're an editor and you find an error or typo in the EPUB, you can simply unpack the EPUB, edit the text directly and suffer no formatting consequences because of EPUB's reflowability. And because it's a digital format, it means that we can do things that PDF can't, or shouldn't, such as being able to embed audio and video files into the ebook. Additionally, if you want a fixed shape like PDFs, EPUB does have a fixed layout mode, which could come in handy for, say, a textbook that could make use of various media. But I'll be featuring reflowable EPUBs in this video anyway, since I don't know how to make fixed layout ones with the tools mentioned. So, how can we write reflowable EPUBs in a markup language similarly to how LaTeX does? The answer I want to offer you is Markdown and Pandoc. You may recognize Markdown if you're a programmer. Pretty much every modern software codebase comes with a readme.md, the .md telling you that it's a Markdown file. And all that Markdown really is, is a subset of HTML specialized in the creation of text documents rather than a website creation through its extremely easy to learn syntax, making it an optimal solution for our purposes. In fact, if you use a static site generator like Eleventy, Jekyll, Hugo, or Zola, you should already be familiar with Markdown as it's the main language used for content creation for those generators, as well as the most popular option. Plus, because Markdown is just a reduced subset of HTML, there is nothing stopping us from including actual HTML inside of our document to extend its features. This, of course, includes also adding CSS and JavaScript to it. I think you can see where I'm going with this. Pandoc is a text document converter. It has a vast array of supported formats you can convert from and to, as well as a vast amount of customization options to go along. With it, we can convert our markdown to an EPUB with no problem, and even to a PDF, but I wouldn't recommend that. I'll go into it later, when I'll talk about LaTeX. Before we start, I would recommend you install a more complex text editor than your typical Notepad or Notepad++, usually one that is often also used by programmers. I personally recommend VS Code, which is what I recommend if you're absolutely new to this workflow. If you're a programmer, I'm sure you're already using something that you like, like NeoVim for example. But believe me, you will want quick access to the terminal interface. I'm going to list some VS Code extensions that you can install to hopefully make your life easier. You can also find them in the description, along with some links to other things that I've mentioned here. Starting is extremely easy. First of all, what I recommend is creating a folder where you'll keep your markdown files. Opening said folder in your text editor, create a file with the .md extension, write some markdown in that file, and then invoke pandoc. The command will generate an EPUB. If we want to add some CSS, we just need to add the dash dash CSS flag along with the name of the CSS file. Now, I wouldn't try to go too crazy with the CSS. I severely doubt that your weak, meek, effeminate, submissive, and definitely overpriced if you bought new ebook reader does not compact with the unmatched power of the Chromium embedded framework. I may be wrong, but I don't think they'd include that if they actually cared about battery lifespan, so expect a reduced subset of CSS at work. 
I won't go too in-depth with the options that Pandoc and Markdown have as there is plenty of documentation, forum posts and examples online that you can find to solve your issues. So this solved the EPUB question, but how about PDFs? Making a PDF is going to be a bit more involved. You can simply convert your Markdown file into a PDF directly using Pandoc. What Pandoc will do is turn your PDF into LaTeX and then invoke a LaTeX compiler to turn that LaTeX into a PDF. Hell, you can even define some LaTeX stuff in the Markdown's YAML metadata block or separate YAML file, like the document class. You can also tell Pandoc which LaTeX engine you want to use to create the PDF using the dash dash PDF dash engine flag and then the name of the engine. I personally prefer using Lua LaTeX. You will have to install a LaTeX distribution on your computer first, as Pandoc doesn't come with any of the popular LaTeX compilers by default. The LaTeX website has some recommendations for you depending on your operating system. Markdown's flexible design is, simply put, perhaps too free-flowing for the strictness of PDF. So my recommendation is to turn your Markdown into LaTeX and then start working in LaTeX. The output LaTeX from the Markdown conversion will be very bare bones, so bare bones in fact that you can't even compile it. Perhaps it's better that way, to allow you to get it formatted just how you want it. LaTeX logic is considerably different compared to Markdown's, but I'm sure you'll be able to get the hang of it. Alternatively, you can also brute force Markdown to PDF directly by seeing what you can add to the YAML metadata in the variables for LaTeX section of the Pandoc manual, which I'll also leave in the description. Now, if you really don't want to learn LaTeX, Pandoc does support also converting your Markdown into .docx or .odt file, which you can then edit from an actual word processor. Although, in my opinion, LaTeX is still the undisputed king for generating beautifully formatted PDFs. I also want to talk about some extra tooling that we can use to make our experience a little better. If you're on Windows, you'll probably want to install WSL or something else that can provide commonplace Unix and POSIX tools like Bash or Make by default. For starters, how about some scripts to automate the process? A simple bash script, or if you want to be fancier, even a make file can make the generation of files much more pleasant. For storing these files, you could use plain old cloud source solutions, such as Google Drive, but we're dealing with potentially highly changing text files here, so we could perhaps sprinkle in some version control software. Git is the de facto standard for code these days. Both Markdown and Code are pure text, so you can use Git without fuss there. Although, if you are going to add binary files like images, videos, or audio, you may want to consider also installing Git LFS, as storing binary files can very quickly increase your Git's repository size, making it take much longer to run operations on it. You can use any Git hosting website that you want. The most popular options are GitHub and GitLab, but because I don't like using them for philosophical reasons, I personally prefer Codeberg, which is also where I host my sort of blog thing. I'll put a disclaimer now for these alternatives. I haven't tested them extensively, so I'm not 100% certain on if what I'm saying here will be 100% accurate. If you're not a fan of Markdown's fragmentation issue, that is, its many flavors, which really isn't an issue in our case since Pandoc includes all the relevant flavors, or find it too limited or lacking in features, there is a potential alternative you could look out for. Ashidoc is a powerful alternative to Markdown. Out of the box, Ashidoc is much more descriptive and powerful compared to Markdown, while still maintaining a fairly similar syntax to it. And it has only one single official implementation, with additional tooling for Ashidoc provided by Ashidoctor. But the reason I didn't go with Ashidoc instead of Markdown was because Ashidoctor's EPUB generation is still very much in development, as well as said development appearing to be rather slow at first glance. And for now, it seems that it doesn't support using custom CSS, which is crucial to me. So I discarded it as a non-starter for my purposes, but you may find value in it, perhaps especially so if you're looking for something better for creating technical documentation. I did claim at the beginning of this that LaTeX is not made for ebooks, but despite my words, there does seem to be a project called Text for eBook that is trying to implement actual EPUB tooling for LaTeX. I have barely touched this project, but it seems alright. If you're coming from LaTeX land, it may very well be worth checking out, perhaps even allowing you to ignore my personal markdown workflow and always stick to LaTeX. It also supports creating fixed layout EPUBs apparently, which I don't think is possible with Pandoc but you are free to correct me. Thanks for watching. Check out my blog at mvpuccino.codeberg.page. Uh, donate to my Ko-Fi and uh, check out my other social media like 
Twitter. I don't know. 